Hello and welcome to FT Markets. This week we've begun publishing a series that focuses on what analysts and investors are expecting from markets in 2016. Joining me now to discuss the outlook here for currencies and emerging markets, Roger Blitz, our currency correspondent. Roger, what's the major theme that's driving the anticipation amongst investors and strategists when they look ahead to 2016? Divergence. It's the decision by the European Central Bank to ease monetary policy, which, uh, which we're expecting them to do later this week. But at the same time, it's the US Federal Reserve moving into tighter monetary policy. So there's a lot of certainty that that is the direction we're heading. But there's a great deal of uncertainty in the market about what's going to happen thereon. I think market participants are very happy to try and call the first half of 2016. But by the middle, they really don't know what is going to be happening. And a lot will depend on the state of the US economy. So let's look in first at the sort of relationship between the US dollar and the euro. This is a currency pairing that earlier this year, back in March, was close, it got down to below 105, and was, everyone was saying, okay, it's all going to go to parity. This is actually a, a chart that rebases the currencies based on what they've done this year. And as you can see, the euro has dropped in value against the dollar. We're back now close to where we were in March. Um, are we heading to parity? We're heading there, and I think most people are calling for parity. Uh, there are some strange um, changes towards the end of the year. For example, JP Morgan actually think that while we'll get to something like 101, 102, we'll actually bounce back to 113, a uh, much stronger euro. And that is, again, part of this uncertainty about how the um, how the American economy is going to factor in. After all, that's what happened around mid-August time. Yes. We suddenly saw this big jump in the euro. And actually the movements, there's a great deal of volatility around. There's not that much liquidity around. A lot of market participants are talking about that. And therefore, the volatility of these moves can be quite sharp. But for the next few months, or at least weeks, we're definitely looking at parity coming our way. And is potentially one of the game changers here if the data in America comes in stronger than people are currently expecting and therefore we're not talking about a Federal Reserve that's just one and done if it does raise rates yeah. in December it actually has to raise rates further in the early well part this is the main discussion what's the pace of this going to be and there are outside factors that are going to influence the US economy principally we're going to be seeing whether emerging markets and especially China whether China starts to influence in a kind of on a feedback loop, uh, issues such as inflation in the US. Well, it's interesting you mentioned China, of course, because everybody's focused very much on what happens with the renminbi in 2016, and that's the green line on this chart. Now, obviously, the devaluation we saw in August has not been accompanied by follow-through weakness in the renminbi, but certainly across the rest of the emerging market world, currencies came under significant pressure back in August. They have rebounded. But what's the general outlook here for emerging markets? Well, again, it's, it, well, it's very focused on China. So what happens in, in China is very important. We think that the, the People's Bank of China don't actually want to use the currency as, a, as an active tool. It wants to probably have a greater liquidity in the market. After all, they're looking for the IMF decision on being a reserve currency coming. And that's going to help their progress in getting more uh, participation in the currency. Um, but there's a great deal of uncertainty about the strength of the Chinese economy. Um, for example, the Mura thinking that actually it's going to slip to about 5.8% of GDP. And therefore, where China has this kind of knock-on effect across EM, we can expect more, um, more difficulties for EM. The growth in EM is going to be uh, pretty, I think our next chart shows the growth in EM is going to come back, but certainly nothing like the great heydays of, of 2008, 2009. And indeed, many people actually think growth in China is actually 4% or perhaps even weaker. Yes, indeed. So the key question here, which sort of brings emerging markets back into the, the sort of, you know, the direction of the dollar too, of course, is the amount of debt that's yeah. been issued in recent years by emerging market economies. A lot of that's priced in dollars. So as the dollar strengthens, the debt servicing bill rises for emerging markets at potentially a very bad time if growth is also slowing down. Again, what's the sort of reading you're hearing from people about the outlook here for the debt servicing and the ability of the EM to grow? Well, the, the uncertainty is the fact that if you're having to repay your debts, if your service charges are so high, where's the money for investment? 
where is the um, the growth going to be happening in EM if there's no investment going on? So while there's kind of an arithmetical improvement in growth, there's no actual structural change in EM that's happening. And therefore, the people are, are, are saying that, you know, with China, for example, where uh, corporates have 160% uh, of the... Of, of, of uh, GDP, their, the, uh, their, debt their, GDP. their debt to GDP, uh, how are they going to be able to get out of that? And, and there's, there are forecasts saying that the current uh, amount of, de of uh, debt that corporates are holding in China, which is something like 16 trillion, is now going to go up to towards about 30 trillion towards the end of the decade. So they don't see a, a change around in that at all. Great, Roger. Well, thanks so much for sharing your, the, the thoughts and opinions of various people we've been talking to for the series. Uh, the series will continue for the rest of this week and in fact we'll be looking at metals prices which is a key area for emerging markets, particularly China. We'll also be looking at the credit cycle potentially turning with a num with now global downgrade close to 100 or global defaults this year, uh, the worst since 2009. And then we're going to look at sovereign bonds and also the outlook for equities and whether the divergence trade in equities um, continues into 2016 where investors increasingly shun US stocks and look to buying European or perhaps even Japanese equities. Um, all this will be available at ft.com slash markets and hope you enjoy the reading.